Hello guys, and um, after putting up a video a, uh, about, what, two, uh, two days ago? Something like that, anyway. Yeah, um, after noting that there's quite a little bit of um, interest in Europa Barbarum 2, I decided to go ahead and do an Epirot campaign. Um, I have updated the game to version 2.2, 2, something like that, 2.2, 2, something of that region. Um, I haven't had a chance to install submods yet, mostly because um, I was asleep, <laughs> and I'm kind of lazy like that. But I'll get around to doing it. Um, so yeah, right, let's play um, Epirus. Okay, so we had a little sneak peek, didn't we, and be like, would you like to see the video? Video, And... Um, it's interesting. What what do we concentrate on? We're at war with the Macedonians. We're at war with the Roman Republic. The um, Illyrians to the north, I'm not too sure. We may be at peace, but that can be taken for certain. Okay. So we'll select our uh, potential successor. There we go. Well done. You become a potential successor. Right here. So we need to sort out the situation here fast. I have put the unit sizes to huge. Uh, I don't know if people would like that, but I don't know. I think like a gigantic phalanx of 241 men is something cool. To... Um, it will make the battles take a long time though. So what I will probably do is uh, fight the bigger land battles myself and maybe some sieges, maybe. The important ones anyway. But probably for the most part, um, oh my god, we have elephants, holy shit, yes, my god, <laughs> I didn't even know, right, what do we do, we're going to send this blow back here, what do we have here, where, okay, so we have some troops here, so we'll combine, I think we should probably take um, Thermon. Maybe. Hmm. Okay, single road network. Oh, simple road network. That would be six turns. Oh, hot damn. Okay. And, uh, I like the music, to be honest. Right, so we'll go with the road networks. Over here, we'll focus on probably... Strengthening our... Right, so we only have a wooden wall. Uh, not particularly great. Actually, to be honest, that seems fair enough. So Taros is kind of on a back burner at the moment. We don't want to and well antagonize the Romans as such to bring their attention to us and Julie. We kind of need to secure our position on the Greek mainland first. Okay. Well, there we go. So what do we have here? Epirot, spy, and a diplomat. Um, can we negotiate a ceasefire with the Romans? No. Okay. Right. We'll send this guy north. We'll have this guy stationed here just to keep an eye on what's going on. Yeah, the Roman cities of uh, Capua and Arpi, or Arpi aren't particularly well defended, but the majority of the Roman army is up here. They do have quite a few cities. Well, the Roman Republic, I should say. Right. Jesus. Right, yeah, so the major... Okay, well, with that in mind, I don't think we could really afford that. Hmm. Population 5740. Uh, we don't know about here. I'm going to get rid of this fleet. We can build fleets when we need them. And it should help us um, shave off some. Right, so we have an assassin here. Can't use him as an ad hoc spy, I suppose. Okay. Am I missing anything else? 
Okay, there we go. Yes. So this army is probably Cosmos members. I might just the elephants are Cosmos the mo- Yeah. Fuck. That is something expensive. So it's the elephants that are costing us the most in upkeep. Uh, so, do I get rid of them? Probably not. I'd probably need to save them, to be honest. I believe the elephants were bought from, um, what is it, Seleucius the Victor? Seleucius the Victor. Um, I believe he traded with an Indian prince or something. I can't quite remember. I definitely need to read up on this period of history, because it's really fantastic. There's so much that goes on, it's really amazing. And, um, hopefully through this series, you guys might become more interested in this period as well. Oh, uh, the Daedochi? Daedochi. Probably something like that. <laughs> Only problem is the turn times. They're not that long, but they're fairly long enough. So while we're waiting for the turns to go by, I can um, look up online this period, get some dual interesting facts and that sort of stuff. Yes, I could have. I could look at Ep, mm, Pyrrhus, Pyrrhus of Epirus, that's him. Okay. Right, so the rebels are moving towards Fermon. I reckon we could probably take the Macedonian city of Demetrius. Fairly easily. Right, let's send our assassin. Yeah. So, Corinthos is not really very well guarded. The Macedonian army is probably up here somewhere. Or he, I'm not too sure. They don't hold Sparta. Sparta, well, Sparta and um, Athens are sort of independent. Sem semi independent. Okay. I like to build a watchtower. It's something I really miss from like the newer Total War games is the fact that building watchtowers is so, oh my god, so good. Like it's such a shame you can't do it. Hmm. Okay. Though I didn't quite mean to attack the force, I suppose we might as well go for it now. I'll probably let the AI, um, AI fight this one though. Yeah. Are we at what? Right, so we're at war with all the Greeks. Ah, so here's the remainder. Okay. The Roman Republic hasn't moved any men. Right, so we will go into Den next turn. Um, I think I'm going to just disband some units just because they're not needed. Right, there we go. Right, the same and cavalry, they are good, but, well, they're going to be fighting inside a settlement, and cavalry don't exactly do well inside settlements. Right, so that brings us down a little bit more. So, yes. Our army in the south has to win. Oh, Macedonia. Ceasefire? No? No. Oh. Maybe you're trying to bribe or something. Try to bribe? Oh. Well. Okay. Oh yes, also the prolific victory sort of thing from the Total War games, that was named after, well, prolific victory. The word prolific was actually named after Pyrrhus of Epirus. Basically, victory, a very, very dear victory. Okay. Is so reading from the Wikipedia page? Pyrrhus was a Greek general and statesman of the Hellenistic period. He was a king of the Greek tribe of Molossians, of the royal of the royal Asiad house. I don't know how you say that. <laughs> and later he became king of Pyrrhus and Macedon or Macedon. He was one of the strongest opponents of early Rome. Some of his battles, though successful, cost him heavy losses, which the term prolific victory was coined. There we go, told you. <laughs> Right. The Greek city of Tarantium in southern Italy fell out with Rome due to violation of an old treaty that specified Rome was not to send warships into the Tarantian Gulf. 
or Trantine Gulf. So basically, Trantim is like this region area. Yes, right. So the Macedonians have sent out a force. Um. Oh, I love doing that. Okay. Right, so we'll auto-resolve. Clear victory, of course. I'm going to run some them. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Now we're going to occupy the settlement. Okay. So we'll reinforce these men. Okay, who are these? Celtic spearmen. Oh, yes, yes, right. Um, in this uh, period, basically Celts and like basically Germanic tribes like descended from the north down here and like basically pillaged through the uh, Macedonian lands. So yeah, they were turned back, and ba well, they were basically turned back by um, a Pyrus. Well, uh, Pyrus, sorry, and yeah, they basically saw Pyrus as a fantastic leader, which is something that was very common throughout all of his uh, battles, and they chose to fight for him. It's not like mercenaries as such. Okay. Right. And we did lose some elephants, though. <sighs> okay. Historically, elephants have been used in battle since at least the Vedic Aryan tribes first arrived in the Indian subcontinent. <clears throat> Depictions of elephants and seals are known from the Indus civilization, but whether they were already used for war at this point is not known. However, the Vedic period, elephants were quickly domesticated and trained for war. During the Mauryan period, as the importance of chariots declined, the importance of elephants grew dramatically. According to uh, Magathesnus, I don't know how you say, blah blah blah, had over 9,000 elephants in his army, and nobody except the king himself was ever allowed to own an, uh, an elephant. Let me help. 9,000. Fucking <laughs> hell. Right. There we go. So what we'll do now is we'll siege this down. Ah dear. Hmm. Okay. Suppose we can just put a siege up here. If we lose that army, it's not the biggest loss. Okay. Um. Hmm. Do we really need these men? Uh. Oh, cool. <sighs> it's hard. I mean, we're not losing anywhere near as much. Probably be able to even that out fairly soon. If we can find trade with somebody, that would be good. Okay. That's just a rebel town. Hmm. It's really... <laughs> the elephants are really causing the problem. Okay, so they will attack us. Hmm, Antigone is... Antigonos. Yeah, so... For the most part, the Roman Republic doesn't seem uh, intent on conquering us. So that's good. Oh, conquering Taurus. I may put the taxes up on Taurus, actually. It's the most heavily garrisoned city I have at the moment, so it should be okay. We'll see. Okay. 
Oh, yes. Um, basically, what this uh, mod also simulates is basically the campaigning season. So basically, I was in this sort of period, and it, for the much for much of human history, really, like uh, during the winter season, obviously, well, basically summer. Uh, uh, you would campaign when the season was good, basically. So the way the game models it is, in the winter, you can recruit a lot more units for use in the summer. When the, when the season's good, so you'd be able to march. I need to have food at home. Okay. So they'll last two turns. Hmm. God damn, they're so expensive. Okay. Boom, ba -da boom. Hmm. Yeah, it doesn't actually produce that much. Okay, we can put them up here. As long as we have some growth, that is good. Uh, dun -dun, dun -dun. Keep sieging them. Okay. So we have um, two generals in here. So we'll have this. Go ahead. There we go, clear victory. Right, so we've wiped out the Macedonian forces in the south. Now, do we go and try and take Fernom, or Fermon? That could be quite a good idea. You know, I really wish I started with a death mat over here. Right, there we go. So we are getting there. Yeah, screw it, might as well do I get rid of them. Okay, one moment. Somebody's at the door. Be right back. Okay, guys, I'm back. Sorry about that. Just had to go answer the door. Right. Yeah, these um, troops are getting lower numbers. The thing is, I don't want to waste money. Once we're making money, things will be a lot different. Right, the Potomac. Oh, well, the Potomac. Potomac? Potomac? Blah, 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 blah. Another successor general, basically. Or oh, successor kingdom. Yeah, we definitely need more trade, to be honest. Okay. Right, we'll siege the city. March south and join with, well, with Epirus. Oh, Pyrrhus, sorry. God damn it. Okay. So they do have troops here. Hmm. Oh, it's a rebel general. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, we are doing good. It's interesting that we can siege the Bacchidonian capital. 
house. Very good. They do have a significant garrison here, but if we could take care of this, then I think we'll be quite well off. We'll actually be making money. Okay, so we'll send these guys to reinforce. We'll take this first. I'm not too sure if this actually gives you money or whatever. Not too sure. Ah, now we're making money. That's good. That is very good. Okay. We just need to secure our um, group on the homeland. And if we can take Greece, that's a fantastic power base for us. It's fairly wealthy and it's, it's very good. It's all our culture and everything, religion. The map is huge, by the way. For someone to take every settlement on the map, holy shit, that would take so long. Like, Jesus. Good luck with that one. I think it'd be kind of cool if we tried to remake Alexander's Empire. That'd be quite nice. Try and reunite it. Okay, there we go. Yep, still sieging. 